In this video, I'll show you one of the ways I save time as a Squarespace web designer. When I kick off a custom build, I don't start from scratch. I start with my starter template. So today I'll give you a tour of my starter template and you can use that info to create your own. Or if you wanna save even more time, you can purchase a copy of my starter template. Welcome to my starter template. This is what I use to duplicate to kick off custom builds so that I have a bunch of stuff already done for me and it really streamlines the initial setup. I'm going to give you a tour of everything that I have in this starter template to give you some ideas on creating your own. Or if you wanna save some time, you can just purchase a copy of this starter template and I'll send you an invitation to add a copy to your Squarespace account. The first two pages here, Help and Sandbox, are both client pages. So when you are ready to hand off your website to your client, you're doing your offboarding, you're just gonna drag those into the not linked section, leave them there for your clients and show them how to use them. So just very quickly, the help page is if they get stuck on something. You'll delete this section up top that explains what the page is about and then this is what your client will see. Need a little more help? You can put some information here on their support that you offer and then how to book you after support is over. Underneath this section, I love to put some notes, reminders for them to save sections as a backup before they start editing and to always check the site on mobile after edits because as we know, things can shift around. After that, I have some subheadings here of different things that I think they might want to do on the website. For example, adding images. I would link up a walkthrough video here showing them how to add an image to their website with notes on resizing them, optimizing them, setting alt text, and how to use the asset library. Very often my clients want to add additional testimonials, so I would create a walkthrough video and link that up here. Lots of my clients have accordion blocks on their site for jobs or resources that they want to edit from time to time. So again, another walkthrough video here. If we're using email campaigns and I have that set up, I'll create a walkthrough for them on sending email campaigns and link that up here. And then I always include after site launch because when we've linked up Google Search Console, they're going to get those scary emails from Google Search Console saying, things like error on your site, text too small to read. So I have a little link here and I mentioned to them when we connect it, they're gonna get those emails and they sound scary, but there's nothing to worry about. And this links to a blog post explaining what those are. And then finally, a few steps they can take to improve SEO after site launch. And then in this column, I've got the fonts and colors so I can direct them here when they need that information instead of sending them to site styles where they might dig around and change some things. So there's a link where they can view their palette. I have an image here of their color palette. I have headings and paragraph fonts here so they know that information. And then this area below is custom code backup. So anywhere I have page injection code or custom CSS, I drop that in here because if something goes awry, if somebody gets into that custom code and starts messing around with it, you have a backup here so that you can always restore it from how it was when you launched. All right, so this help page is kind of for you, but mostly for your client. And again, when you are ready to launch their site, you'll just drag that down into the not linked section. You'll notice that I already have this hidden from search results, so it's not gonna show up in search results. And you're just gonna want to walk them through how to use this help page when they are ready to make some changes to their website or if they have any questions about the site styles. The sandbox is another page for your clients. And again, you're gonna drag that into not linked when you're ready to launch. And what I do with this page is I drop in sections that I've created on their website that I think they may be editing at some point in the future. So I will just add section after section after section here. And this is kind of like a training wheels area. They can play with these sections on this page and it won't break anything on the live site. So clients really love this because it helps them get comfortable with using Squarespace, with editing their site with zero stakes. And we have the header and the footer removed from this page. So there is nothing they can break. So once they get comfortable here, they can go and edit the live site. Now this next page is for you as a designer. After you've duplicated the site and you are 
trying out new fonts and colors for your new custom website for your client, you're going to be able to see at a glance the sizing of the fonts, how they look together, the colors of all your different sections. And another thing that I like to do is go through and set up the buttons. So I have a primary button, a secondary button, and a tertiary button so that I could have a primary button next to a secondary or a tertiary and it would look really nice together. So that's something that I go through and set up for each section and I can just see it all at once and see how it will all work together. So as you're changing out your fonts and your colors, you'll see how they look in text and buttons in a newsletter block with a background and in a form block. So it's really easy for you to hop in and make any tweaks before you start building out the site. This next page is just a time saver. A lot of my clients want a link in bio site for their Instagram. So again, here, I just have the basics set up so I can pop in their logo, change what these buttons are and what they point to on the website in advance. I have code to remove the announcement bar. I've already turned off the header and footer, just like the sandbox page, but we don't want the announcement bar to show here on this page. So I added some code to remove that. And it's also hidden from search results. So when you're ready for this one, you can just drag it under not linked. And then you can tell your client that they can just go to their Instagram account and put their domain name.com, whatever slash links, and that will take them to this link and bio page. Now, these other two pages are just things that I thought might be helpful. I added a toolbox page for all the products and services that I use in my business on a regular basis. Some of these are aff affiliate links and some of them have discount codes. So be sure and check out the discount codes here if you are going to try out one of these platforms. So you can keep this until you duplicate the site for your client and then on that duplicated site go ahead and just delete this page. Same for FAQs. You could certainly keep this styling if you wanted to set it up for an FAQ page for your client or you can just delete this page once you've started on your client design. Now those were the pages but there's more. One thing that I'm a little particular about are the site settings. So I have those set at my preferred defaults. You can absolutely change these if these aren't your favorites. But if we go under miscellaneous, I turn off animations for the site. I rarely use them, but if I do, I want to be able to add them in rather than having to take them out. For site spacing, I like to have a page width max of 1440 pixels. That looks really great on laptops, which most of my viewers are on. And it's a little easier to size up and make it look good than if I started with a really big page width max here and had to size it down for laptops. So this is what works best for me. And the site margin, I use six view widths and a hat tip to Chris Schwartz Edmiston who figured out that this site margin really makes your auto layout list sections look good on mobile. And we'll get back to those in a second. Now, I also have my custom code preloaded that I use on most sites. So if we go over here and open up our custom CSS panel, just a quick run through of code that I use on a lot of sites. So I have it loaded here. The first is changing the default margins of your heading text. And I have this set to one REM, which means that the margin is going to be the same as the font size. And I just feel like that keeps it a little tidier looking. So I like to add that custom code to every site. I also have code to move the header social icons a little closer together. Otherwise they look weirdly spread out to me. So I just snug them up a little bit so they look nicer. On a lot of sites, I also change the active and hover nav state. So I remove the underline that is normally here and I change this to be my dark color for my color palette for both active links and hovering. And finally, we would see this on the client help page. I wrap the code blocks because otherwise all the code gets cut off weirdly and you have to scroll left and right. So I just make sure to wrap the code so I can see it all at a glance. So that's the most common custom code that I use. So I have it all loaded here so I don't have to hunt for it and paste it in. And I can just delete anything that I'm not going to use. One of my pet peeves with site styles is when a whole bunch of fonts are loaded that you're not actually using. So what I've done in this starter template is pare down to just two fonts. 
One is for headings and one is for everything else. So when I click here, you can see that only those two fonts are loaded in the style guide. There are some Squarespace templates that have a bug, so extra fonts are loaded and you can't track them down and get rid of them. The other thing that drives me batty is for assigned styles, sometimes a lot of these come as custom. So they're custom settings. So when I'm changing things in the site styles, for example, my nav won't change and I can't figure out why. And I remember, oh, it's set as custom in assigned styles. I bet I have to go hunt that down. So I've taken out all of the customized settings here and you can go in and customize it if you'd like, but you're starting from a nice clean baseline. And finally, I have a few of my favorite layouts loaded here on the homepage so that if I use them on the client site, I can just go in and save that section and reuse it somewhere else. One of my favorites is doing a fake header for the list section so you can have a description underneath. So you can see these are actually two sections and I like to get the spacing just right. So I have this set the way I like it and then I know I can use it on the client site and I'll be happy with how it looks. This is another auto layout list section that is a testimonial slider. I love using headshots for the testimonials. So I have everything sized and spaced the exact way I want it. And I use this on a lot of sites. And then a couple more examples here of sections that you could use on future sites. And then I also recommend if there are sections that you love that you're using on most sites and you're building from scratch each, each time, come and build it here. And then when you duplicate your starter template, it will be there. You only have to do it here once instead of on every single site. Okay, that covers the basics of the starter template. If you'd like to create your own, use what I've talked about here to make something that works for you. And if you wanna just save time and kick off with a copy of my starter template, you can get your own copy in my shop. And if you want to learn more about the help and sandbox and client offboarding in general, under the FAQs, I have a question, what are the offboarding and sandbox pages? And there is a link to my 2023 Squarespace Circle Talk on client offboarding that you can watch and learn more about how I offboard clients. So whether you decide to create your own starter template or start with a copy of mine, I hope you found this helpful and I wish you all the best on your web design journey. <music>